Welcome to the Modern Application Development 2 screencast. In this screencast, we'll explore how to use Fetch APIs along with Vue. You already learned about Fetch APIs and lifecycle of Vue. Now we are going to bring them together. For this, you will need a browser. I'm using Firefox here. You can use any other browser. I'm also using uh, Sublime Text. You can use any other editor. Uh, let's start with the application which we already have which was a simple message app or like a guestbook app where you could leave a message right and uh, it was a simple one where you leave a name and a message and say hi it will log here but we didn't have an option to save the message to backend also get it back when we actually load the page we'll try to add that using fetch apis and some backend now i'm not going to build a backend for this i'm just going to tell you how to call the apis so if you have a backend you can call let's assume uh, that we want to save the message when say hi is called right when say hi is called before we show it here or along with showing it here we want to send it to some backend right what happens when we call say hi we are calling a function called or a method called say hi and you know we are adding to the message here you know and then you know you're resetting the name and message and then you're emitting the event and that's it now before you do these two if you wanted to send it to back into save you would want to save it here right right we will have to save to back in using API here, right? Which it could be very easily done using a, a fetch, right? And uh, we can make it like an asynchronous call. We don't have to make it a synchronous because it can happen independently. Now let's say when you actually click on say hi, I want to show an icon uh, which says, you know, saving in progress or show an yellow upload icon and when it's saved or when it successfully comes back uh, from the REST API I want to make it green right so I'm going to use a um, icon uh, to do that to do that uh, icon I'm going to use bootstrap icons you can go to bootstrap icons here um, and see how to use them basically you have to import an uh, CDN let's just do that and then you can use an icon right i'm going to use a cloud icon let's say cloud icon upload cloud okay uh this one or this one okay i am just going to copy this and paste it i want it to be next to the button here right and so I have to edit my template to have it next to the button here like that so let's see um, how it looks okay there you go and uh, by default I want it to be green and then change color accordingly so you might have to add a class dynamically so you'll have to use class binding um, in in the view right uh, you already learned about class binding if not you can go explore uh, view class binding uh, let me just open that page for you there you can set the class bind right using this we bind class and it can be picked up from a variable value the name of the thing so I can use just that right I'll uh, use that here okay um sorry let's just paste under the class part so that it's not confusing uh, it will be v colon bind oh no v dash v dash bind colon class 
uh, I'll say saved icon class. Okay, saved icon class is a data the component right okay let's see here okay and give some value to that so you know the colors uh, that can be used in bootstrap uh, by actually sending text success it will be green the class text success will make it green uh, if you make it text uh, danger it will become red text warning will become yellow let's see if it uh, shows up right okay let's go here refresh this yeah it's green right now uh, before I call this um, function I want to make this yellow right I'm just saying it's saving right so it will be warning okay be here warning it will be text warning as a class name that will make it yellow then I'll call a fetch API one success I'll make it green again if not I'll make it red so let's call an API I'm just going to call a dummy API here I'm just going to paste the okay so here I'm doing I'm just doing a post um, for this dot title I'm just pa passing title also title is you know uh, the title here is Fatima so it will actually send the title as Fatima for Fatima visitor name is this dot visitor name and um, visitor message is this dot visitor message I'm stringifying it and posting it to this endpoint I'm just sending it to htbn.org slash post for testing but you could send it to real you know your create uh, API right along with other headers or API key etc etc you could have an API key in, as part of your headers too right and uh, when the when it success I'm making saved icon class as success if uh, there is a failure I'll make it as danger which is red and then the rest will continue right let's see how it runs just going to inspect just for our uh, viewing right and so okay it's all there um just refreshing it so i get the latest okay now i'm going to do I'm going to send a message to Fatima Tage. Hello, Fatima. How are you? Right? And click say hi. It became yellow. Now it became green. You could see there was a for a second it was yellow, right? Uh, and then the response came back and it became, you know, green again. You can see there is a response here. There was post post request happened uh, response came and uh, response was uh, there was no issues with the response so it became uh, success right the data sent you can see here in the request data sent is for Fatima visitor name and visitor message ignore the spelling mistake here uh, you know just a spelling mistake that I've done everywhere right so if I had a real API here it would have sent to the real API and it would have sent to background and then based on whether success or failure I could have shown here now I can still do one more um, how is the weather right so now you can see once more I'll just clear this say hi yellow then it became green right 
So that's how you actually send the data. It could be same thing could be used if you wanted to delete this. You could add a delete icon here and on click of delete you could send a message saying or uh, do a delete request. Uh, similarly delete for this. Um, usually you don't give edit to messages but you can also do edit messages for example etc etc. Showing the icon is interesting because you know if it takes more time to save or the network is down then you can always show that you know a red icon to tell them that it's not been saved. So it's more interesting way. Now let's say you know when you load it you wanted to show the list of messages here. Now we don't have real APIs I'm just going to um, add a dummy JSON as a response and use that okay. Now where will you get those data? You could get the data as part of your mounted message right. We learned that you know as part of life cycle there's a message uh, there's a life cycle function called mounted that gets called when the uh, when the UI gets mounted right. So we can call it a function here and this is where you would want to do like you can do uh, you can get the messages get the previous just send to Fatima and display right to get getting the message is easy you can do one more fetch request and displaying the message is also easy it's nothing what you just need to add it to your um, right nothing if you add it to messages everything else should update now let's assume that in the first part we are not going to make an api call we are just going to add a array here into the messages and see if that works right uh, let's let's see there was only one message <clears throat> this was the response from the api let's assume for a second this was the response from api and we just need to assign it to this dot messages in the beginning for it to happen uh, for it to show up right that's it right let's see whether this works as soon as it loads whether it will show this right uh, let's go back to the page let's refresh hey, there you go the initial as soon as it got mounted it displayed the initial message and then you can continue right uh, page hi right it adds up to the same things and continues right now instead of doing uh, this you know because we are going to use an api to get this we can do an api call right you can use async await also uh, if you want to do like you know uh, in synchronous mode but uh, it will in usually it won't wait and mount it but we can always do so you can do async um, we can say response or r is equal to fetch uh, URL right I'll wherever our API is running we are trying to get from there and then uh, data is equal to uh, it both will be await right this will be await this will also be await and then await r dot json now if everything goes well we create this you can try catch this to handle the error right? you can put a try catch around this uh, and then make it green or yellow or whatever you want to do right um, and uh, or I'm just assuming it's going to return here now but it may not so you better always try catch and do the exception handling but if the data I written is exactly the same data then you can just do this dot message is equal to data and that should actually set up the whole thing and display the value. Now let's just for simplicity I am just going to um, add a JSON here called messages JSON and I am going to add the same JSON here and I am going to the folder uh, okay and start a python 3 server. Uh, HTTP 
dot server this is like a dummy api response so now uh, if i go back here and do local host 8000 messages dot json it should return me that uh, json right so now we can even do a call for that all right okay let's see what happens or uh, i'm just calling it using file uh, the other one is http let's say if not we can open it as http right okay so it didn't because it has some issues because the network doesn't allow course because this is file and that is http now we can just uh, instead of opening like that we can open it like this right it's loading there you go this time it got the response you can see here it got the response messages.json and uh, response you can see it's the response uh, which is same as this and you know that has been set here right so that's how you call in the mounted you could also be done in the the initial one before create or created but i would rather do it in mounted right you could uh, even use asynchronous way of doing i just wanted to show you both the ways of doing it one is synchronous and the other one is you know asynchronous uh, using a, a wait uh, you know async await this is the other standard way of doing it um, so uh, this is how you can call apis uh, from view either based on event or based on the uh, life cycle of the object you can also add other functions and do um, uh, something called watches uh, watches is a way of watching an attribute or a value and then using that to call apis uh, i'll just show you the page where you can go read about them but i'm now going to take you through the details of it right this is the watch, watcher example let's say there was a question and you wanted to show an answer but on change of question you wanted to call an api uh, to show the answer and change of every time the question changes you want to make a call uh, and then to the back end and the response you want to show answer and for that you will set up a, a watcher on the question it's done like this you can see here answer and question is here you can set up a watch this watch is on the question on change of question you can send the question to the api once it is responded back you can update the answer so watcher is another way to call an api you can go explore it uh, by yourself uh, thanks a lot for watching uh, that's all for today mm -hmm.